Hello team, how are we doing today? Kia ora. Um, hopefully you are all hearing this and um, everything is working. Apologies for the delay. Again, I'm still getting used to the technology, but hopefully we can get it all to work. Um, let me know if everything is coming through clearly. Um, I can see that some of you have answered it in the chat, which is fantastic. Um, if you already know about Mrs. Seagreen, maybe some of the content from today will be pretty easy for you, but hopefully there'll be a couple of questions in there that are a little bit of a challenge. All right, let's move on to what we're doing today. But first, we're gonna try and answer this mahia. Uh, what are the characteristics that make something alive? Well, there are seven major processes that make something alive, and we usually call that Mrs. Green. Sometimes we, we count eight of them, and we talk about Mrs. C. Green, where the C stands for cells. Um, we have movement, respiration, sensitivity, growth, reproduction, excretion, and nutrition. And we'll be talking about those today. Hopefully, if you've already started the work that Miss Staples has set you, you'll be feeling pretty comfortable with this content. Um, before we dive into that, we're going to have a little bit of a corridor about our, what our week is going to look like. And then after we've gone through that, we're going to do a little bit of a rundown of some daily scheduling stuff. That'll be us for today. Hopefully, it'll be uh, nice and short. Uh, this is a short week after all. So let's see what we can get done. As always, if you've got questions while we're going through this, just post them in the chat. Okay, firstly, short week, less content. Miss Staples has created an assignment for you, which you do in the slides themselves. Hopefully that's been pretty clear to you as you're going through that work. That is on Google Classroom for you. Um, you're encouraged to take notes on those slides as you need to, and then to submit them when you finish. I will be going through those and uh, leaving comments as needed. Uh, additionally, uh, you'll see that there's a little bit of work on Education Perfect for you. There is a core class competition. That means each of the core classes within Year 9 are competing against each other to see how well we can do. Um, who can get the most done on EP this week? I think we've got a good shot. We've got some competent kids in here and I think we're all capable of doing the work. So hopefully uh, this will be reasonably straightforward for you guys uh, to crush this, but we'll see. Um, so today, like I said, we're gonna be doing a little bit of a review. Now these slides are adapted pretty much directly from what Miss Staples has posted. So they'll either look familiar to you if you've already gone through them, or they won't um, if you haven't gone through them, in which case that will encourage you to get this work done. So let's get on to that. Radio, first slide. We have a little bit of a video. I'd encourage you guys to go and watch this. I'm not gonna play it here. Um, this is just on the different life processes, which we're gonna do a bit of a run through right now. Just have a brief corridor about them. So firstly, the way that we define uh, life involves movement, the ability to move. Uh, organisms need to be able to move in order to find water, food, uh, and mates and to be able to reproduce, etc. Uh, we also talk about respiration. Um, now, remember, respiration is a little bit different. You might not have encountered this word in this context before, but respiration is the production of energy within cells, particularly by breaking down certain chemicals. It is different uh, to breathing. Breathing uh, or the system of respiring is different. And sometimes in science, we have these technical words that depending on the context, we mean different things. And it's the same uh, for you guys. We have like slang that we use um, with our mates that maybe our grandparents don't understand, or if we were to use the words with them, they would interpret it differently. It's the same thing in science. If we're a microbiologist, we normally talk about cellular respiration. If we're a physiologist looking at how the body works, we'll more often be talking about respiration in the breathing sense. Just as important to understand the difference between those two terms. Um, but right now, we're gonna be talking about cellular respiration, okay? Cool. S, sensitivity, the ability to respond to a stimuli or um, something going on in the environment. If we can respond to those, that means we can adapt and change our behavior to those. And that gives us an advantage almost, um, well, I'd, I would say every organism, is able to respond to some degree of stimuli. That's part of what makes something alive. The nature of those responses and what ways we have to respond or uh, receive inputs from those stimuli differs between organisms. And that's part of the beauty of studying biology is understanding those different stimuli 
what receives those signals, how those signals are interpreted, and then what behaviors result in different organisms as a result of those. I think it's fascinating. I hope you do too. That's going to be the focus of our content for this term. So Mrs. C, the C in Mrs. C Green, cells. All living things have cells as far as we characterize them. Um, there's a little bit of a diagram and we'll be talking uh, this year about differences between different kinds of cells. In particular, you can see there we've got an animal and a plant cell where they've got some things that are similar and some things that are different. This will be the focus of some of the content we've got coming up. Okay, we talk about growth, things increasing in size uh, or replicating or replacing injured cells over the course of our lifetime. For you, um, you replicate uh, pretty much every cell in your body. There's some that you replicate a lot faster and some uh, that you replicate a lot slower. But for the most part, we are constantly producing new cells to replace the old ones. In that case, are you the same you that started off life if all of the cells that made you up have changed? It's a question worth pondering. But um, the important thing for you to know is that that increase in size or that replication of cells is a fundamental thing uh, that we characterize uh, as life itself. Uh, now we talk about reproduction. There are different kinds of reproduction, and this might be uh, the first time uh, that we've encountered reproduction in this sense. Uh, there are different kinds. There's sexual reproduction, which we might be familiar with, uh, which produce uh, genetically different organisms to the two parents, uh, combining elements of both. Asexual reproduction involves when one organism or one, usually one cell, uh, duplicates and produces a copy of itself. Usually these are genetically identical, and uh, if you compare that to sexual reproduction, you have an organism that is different to both the parents. We're ignoring, of course, there the element of mutation. How subtle changes can occur over time, um, but we'll get to that uh, as we move on this term. All right, excretion, getting rid of waste. That is one of the most common things that we can see uh, with life, and it's really important to know both what we're taking in and what we're excreting and why. Um, it's really important to understand where those waste products go and how they're used. So um, this is something that we'll be exploring in much more detail this term. Excuse me. Um, then we've also got nutrition. That's the taking stuff in. Um, organisms tend to either produce their own food through processes like photosynthesis, where they turn uh, light and other precursors into sugars that they can then use to supply themselves with energy, or they need to consume stuff. And so we'll be talking a bit more about how organisms get their energy and the raw materials they need to be able to grow over the course of this term. So if you've already gone through these slides, you'll notice that there is a life process notes table for you to fill out. Your job is to go here and to put in the name, the definition, and possible ways to observe this process in a living organism. I think you're capable of doing this given the information that we've just gone through, but if you need to, there's uh, more detail on the slides and there's some other information you can find out online to include this detail. Uh, once you're done, you can contact a classmate, maybe uh, even you could do this during our Google Meet this week um, and see if they've come up with any different ways of identifying the life process or if they have differences in their definitions or in um, uh, observations that they've got. So something for you to work on. Additionally, there is a couple of things for you to consider. Um, using Mrs. Seagren, write an explanation for whether fire is living or non-living. It's a great question. If we go through our Mrs. Seagren, we start with M, that is our movement. It does fire move? Something to think about. R, does it involve respiration? Do certain products come in and certain other products come out and is energy given off as a result? There's a question. Is it sensitive? Does it change in response to stimuli? What happens if we squirt water on it? There's another question. Work through that list, see uh, whether you think fire is living or non-living and why. Here, you have a little bit of an opportunity to pause and process. Um, there's some example student answers at different cell wave levels and a little bit of an explanation as to why they are at that level. Um, this is an example of a marking scheme 
And we've done a little bit of this while we did the material world content. So hopefully you're familiar with this type of structure. Uh, but hopefully um, you can use this to look and assess how well you have answered the previous question. Maybe even after having a look at this, you go back and you rewrite your answer a little bit just so it's better. Um, let's keep going through here. So there's a couple more questions for you to answer. Are flowers living or non-living? Are clouds living or non-living? These are extensions, they're not required, but I think you're all keen beans. So if you want to attend this, if you've got time this week, you're more than welcome to do so. And when you submit it, I can take a little bit of a look and see how your thinking is going. Okay, lastly, this is our week four summary. This will be below those little cahoots which are at the very bottom. Um, there are three questions there for you to answer. The first is, which life processes in Mississippi Green do you think are of most importance? How do cells get energy to carry out their functions? And what is the difference between sexual and asexual reproduction? Now, you're welcome to just type out your answers or you're welcome to create new slides with information as you deem it necessary. This shouldn't take you a great deal of time, but it's an opportunity for you to explain what your thinking is and for us to get a sense of how your understanding is going. I would like each and every one of you to submit uh, this assessment at the end of the week. Um, I'll be able to see who has and has not done that and I'll be able to go through and leave little comments and mark and things. Um, this is less about giving you guys a grade and much more about seeing how your learning is going. If we were in school, you know that I'd be giving you some sort of thing and then having a look at that to assess how your understanding and processing is going. Uh, in part, this would also be a formative assessment, understanding your prior knowledge coming into school. Um, Hopefully that is all clear. You have an understanding of what you need to go on and do. Um, if you have any questions relating to that content, you can post them in the chat now. Um, alternatively, you can ask others in our class, either during our Google Meet or on our Google Hangouts chat. Um, and you can also uh, ask me either directly in the comments or however it best suits you. Okay. Um, what we're going to move on to, just while people are writing in questions if they have them, is how to schedule. One of the pieces of feedback that I've seen in our weekly reflections is that not all of us have had conversations about how to schedule. And as scientists, I think it's important that we take a bit of an approach. You are not Hermione Granger. You don't have a little time turner that you can use to have as much time as you want, unfortunately you need to prioritize your time. And I think it's important that we have a conversation about what that uh, can involve and some strategies for you to take away and use at your leisure. Um, I, in particular, to make sure that we're not feeling too overwhelmed in what is a very difficult and challenging time. Um, if you've already done the, the fire thing on EP already, that's fantastic. It should be a relatively straightforward question for you to answer if you've already had to think about it. Um, okay. There is a bit of a process that we work through when we're scheduling, and I'd like to talk to you about that. There are six questions that we need to ask. Hopefully we're all familiar with um, who this is. Uh, remember Joel Embiid, the process? So this is our process for scheduling. How much time do I have? First question you ask. Hopefully you know when your different assignments are due. If you don't, you need to go on and figure that out. Maybe put it down in a list somewhere. Uh, once you know how much time you have before different things are due, you can move on to the next question. What are my essentials? One of your essentials in there is going to be sleep, right? You can't stay up 24 hours a day, seven days a week. You do need to have your essential sleep. You do need to eat. You do need to make time to go to the bathroom. You need to make time to do the other essential things that you need to do with your family. Um, everyone's going to have a slightly different list of things or what are their absolute non-negotiable essential things they have to do. But when you're scheduling, those are the things you put in first, um, along with uh, figuring out how much time you have to do your different things. The third question is what else is important in your life? So you have uh, these things that you have to do. They might be considered important. You might also have things like training that you have to go and do. You might have to um, make uh, time for other activities that you know are going to be coming up. You might have um, some important engagements that you need to be doing. Whatever those are, you then put those in. For question, uh, or for question four, you need to ask yourself is where is your wiggle room? You might know that uh, for some of your activities, you have to travel a long distance and traffic can really vary. 
Uh, obviously, that's not going to be as big of an issue right now, but um, maybe on some mornings at home, uh, you're unsure of how long it's going to take you to get ready, how long it's going to take you to make breakfast. So you need to give yourself some space in your schedule to wiggle, right? Sometimes you're going to be able to get to school early and that's going to be fantastic. Sometimes you're going to be sitting down in your chair ready to learn straight away and that's great. Uh, but you need to give yourself that, that space that you know that you will need. Um, question number five is another important one. When am I giving myself time to goof around? If you don't give yourself time in your normal schedule to goof around, you'll goof around when you should be on task. You need to schedule time for um, relaxing and taking a bit of a break. And it's important that you schedule that time in so that then you can feel confident in uh, committing to the remainder of the time that you're engaged. Um, the last thing you can do is once you've finished that schedule, you've put in when you're going to goof around, you've put in all your important things, you've put in your wiggle room, you've put in your essentials, uh, is once you've lived out that schedule, you want to go back and reflect. You want to ask yourself, how did this all go down? Are there ways that I can improve for next time? That is the scientific approach. Um, hopefully this is all clear to you so far. If you've got any questions as we are going through, um, that is all good. Okay, we've got a... Um, a couple of different tools here for you to use. This is our part two. Um, some of you will be familiar with these tools, some of you might not be, and that is absolutely okay. So uh, here's a couple of different tools that we might be able to use. The first is bullet journaling. Some of you might love this stuff. You might already have a book already and you love um, drawing in what you do and, and coloring different things. If you love that, that's fantastic. Taking pride in your schedule is, the, is one of the um, most effective ways to make sure that you're sticking to your schedule. Uh, obviously, you don't want to spend all your time preparing a schedule that you then use all that time that you were supposed to be doing that other stuff to make the schedule. That's not a good use of time. But if you're taking pride in that schedule, uh, then you are more likely to hopefully adhere to it. Um, I don't know what the evidence or the literature says on that, but I'd be more than happy to look that up afterwards if you guys are interested. The important thing is that uh, it's a balance. So if you're taking pride in it, that's fantastic. Um, it might be something you want to get into. The other thing is just drawing a timetable. The, the simple act of writing down, at this time of day I'm gonna do this, at this time of day I'm gonna do this, at this time of day I'm gonna do this, that can be all you really need to do to start scheduling. The next thing is year planning. Some of you might have one of these on your walls already with all of the days and weeks. This can be really useful when you've got long-term goals that you're preparing for things like exams or an upcoming sports tournament. They can be useful ways to backtrack and think about, okay, if I've got this thing coming up in the future, when do I need to have my different milestones met? Now, you don't have to do all of this work on paper. You can do this online, and there's some different tools out there that have been created for you. The first one is to-do list apps. There are a huge variety of these available for you guys to use, and hopefully, um, if you're more comfortable with online environments, you're using at least one of them and you've got some sort of list somewhere that says here are the things I have to get done and when they have to get done by. Um, sometimes these to-do list apps let you break down each big task into subtasks, which can be a useful way to uh, make the task feel much more manageable. Um, hopefully you're also familiar with calendar apps as well. Things like Google Calendar, uh, I know Microsoft and Apple both have calendars those apps which you can use to schedule uh, day to day and to order your different activities. Maybe you prefer that dragging an item somewhere as opposed to uh, writing it in a book. Um, if you prefer the book writing, that's absolutely fine. As long as you've got one way of doing it, that's okay. The important thing is now that we're in this online environment, uh, we have much less of an ability to interact with our teachers and we need to be self-sufficient. And I think for year nines in particular, that can be a real challenge. So if we can learn these skills early on, that's fantastic. The last tool that you might uh, not really think of as a tool you could use to schedule is Excel or Google Sheets. Some of you might love uh, playing around with these tools already. Um, if you're familiar with these, you can use these to build your own uh, to-do lists, calendars, and they can look however you want. It's one of the beautiful things about Excel and Google Sheets is that if you organize these uh, documents, you can make them look however you feel that they need to look. 
so that they work best for you. Um, the important thing for me is not that you are using one tool over another, it's that you're using something and that's helping you to maintain and control the time that you are accessing different things. If you've got questions relating to how to use these things, you're welcome to ask me uh, or ask your classmates. And I know that there'll be some of you out there who are already using this, in which case that's fantastic. I think for year nines to know how to schedule and operate your own time uh, is actually a real big challenge um, and something that we're not normally pressuring you to do until university level. So if you're able to pick up at least some of these skills now, I think that's phenomenal. All right, what we're gonna do now is I'm gonna try a little fancy thing um, to go through designing a schedule for a day with you right now. Hopefully, this should work all good. Boom. Okay, hopefully that should be showing you the screen. I'm gonna show you a little bit behind the scenes. Looks like it's working just fine. Okay, um, you can see I've got my six questions here and I'm going to imagine that I am a student right now at Selwyn College who is wondering uh, what to do. Let me just draw on here. Here is my student. I'm gonna draw my legs a little bit better. Let me go. Here we go. There is my student, um, and they are going to schedule their day. How much time do they have? Well, they've got to get their science work done by the end of Friday. So, science is due, due Friday. Maybe they've also got maths, which is due then. Maybe they've also got some English, which is due then. Maybe they've got some his, some social studies work, but that's not due until next week. So these three are my big pieces of work that I have to get done. So social studies, uh, PE, um, next week, and uh, PE, at the time. So you're gonna be asked to do some sort of workout for PE that you then have to submit. Um, and you go, okay, these are my big due dates. These are the, the important things. And I have this one being due Friday, this one being due next week, this one is due at the time that I have to do it. So okay, that's important for me to know. Um, what are my absolute essentials? So let's start by writing out our day. I'm gonna write these in big hour chunks because I think that'll be a bit easier. Um, we have some things that we know we can't live without, and one of them might be sleep. Uh, for developing teenagers, your brains uh, will be uh, really struggling uh, to get up super early in the morning, and that's a completely normal thing to have happen. Uh, but one thing that can also happen is that uh, as a result of staying up very late at night, using your phones or playing games, uh, you can knock yourselves out of sync. So you can um, push yourselves to think that the sun is uh, staying up late at night, when in reality, um, it goes down over the horizon at maybe 5.30 or maybe 6. Uh, but your brain is thinking, ah, oh, the sun is still up and it's 1 a.m. Okay, that means I've got to sleep for eight hours, which might mean that you want to wake up at around 9 or 10 or even past midday which is not ideal. Okay, let's say you're planning from eight to eight. There's my schedule. Okay, I need to sleep. So um, the, the earliest time I'm gonna be getting up is maybe 7.30. Let's say seven here. So we're getting up sometime around here. And we need to give ourselves a little bit of wiggle room. We need to give ourselves some time. Uh, but let's first put in our essentials. What is our absolute musters? Well, I've got to have breakfast. So I'm going to put this time in here for breakfast, uh, shower, get dressed. And these are these are must-dos. You know, if I don't do these things, I'm not settled, I'm not in the mood to work, and that's okay. Um, I can also put in that my family every day goes for a walk um, from 12 until 1. Uh, and that's absolutely okay. I'm gonna put that in, my parents have said that that's non-negotiable, so that's when I'm gonna do that. Uh, we have dinner as a family um, at 6 p.m., okay? So these are things I cannot change. Um, what else is, okay, so those are my absolute essentials. What is really important? Well, I've got some uh, science work to do. That's really important, I've gotta get that done by Friday. I think I need to spend an hour 
on science. Okay, so I'm going to put science in here. What else is important? I know I've got a PE meeting uh, from 2.10 until 3.10. Okay, we'll put that in there. That's PE. All right, we've got two hours left there. So that's giving us enough time to do some maths. Let's put maths here. And English. Okay, cool. So my morning is going to be spent doing science, then maths and English. All right. Um, we've got our time when we have to do some PE. I also need to figure out some time to get some social studies done. All right, that's okay. I can put my social studies after I get back from my walk. Ah, here's an interesting thing. What if I need to have lunch? Okay, I'm going to petition off here that I'm going to have lunch and then work on my social studies for 30 minutes. And then I'm going to spend some more time before I get started with science, doing some social studies at the start of the day. That'll be a good use of my time. Okay. All right. I've put in my key details here. Now I can notice I've got a bit of free time here. That's good. I can use this time uh, between 4 and 5 p.m. Uh, to goof around. Uh, maybe I'll play some video games. Maybe I'll read a book. Maybe I'll go outside and just, you know, sit and enjoy the nice weather that we've been having. Um, this is all looking good to me. Okay. Um, I can might make some little notes that I need to get uh, my education perfect done for science. I also have uh, slides submitted. Okay, cool. Um, I think you guys are getting the idea. We've also noticed that we've got some free time here. Maybe I know that I have um, some important work that I have to get done, so maybe I use this time for some maths, but maybe I don't have important work to get done, and this is my uh, discretionary time, which I can use uh, to read a book. So I might write read a book. Um, once you put in all those things, I'm going to live that day, um, and I'm going to probably do this at the start of the week for the whole week. And then on the weekend, I'll have a look at my schedule and go, okay, did I do a good job? Actually, my science took longer than I expected. Actually, I found that I got really tired about then. So maybe I should have a break at that time and then come back to doing my work. Um, and so that will hopefully help you to adjust and to reschedule uh, your time so that you're using uh, your day more effectively. Remember, this is a skill set that we don't tend to ask year nines to do until uh, much later in the piece. Um, so don't stress too hard about that. You can see the back end of everything now. Hold up. There we go. Okay. Um, that image uh, that I just drew, I will put into this slide, uh, which will make that accessible for you guys, just as an example of one way that you might want to do that. Um, We'll have a bit of a corridor about um, how to schedule everything if you want to when we do our uh, meeting uh, this week. It doesn't matter um, what tools you use, just a reminder, you can use whatever you want. The most important thing is that you have some sort of schedule and that you're reflecting on that schedule. Um, we can use the cell one way when we go through that. Okay, um, that brings us about to the end of what I had to cover for you guys this week. Just a little bit of content and a little bit of stuff on scheduling because uh, we had a corridor uh, about that last week, about the importance of doing that. So um, if you have any questions, you're welcome to ask me those questions now and we can chat about them. Um, otherwise, uh, I think that can be the end of our session for today. Um, I hope you very much have been looking after yourselves. Um, it's lovely to see so many of you here today. I know like not everyone's able to make these or you know has the Wi-Fi capacity to be able to make them, but it's good to see you here. Um, are there any questions immediately on people's minds? Okay, I'll stick around and chat for the for a couple more minutes, but otherwise you'll have a lovely rest of your day. Look after yourselves, and I'm sure we will talk again soon. Okay, kakite.